Hey guys, welcome to a very special edition of The Daily Shave. Today I'm going to be using Dr. John's and Bonnie. And if you know me, you know that this scent is one of my very favorite in all of wet shaving. Let's get into it. And Bonnie is part of the original lineup from Dr. John's. There were five or six scents, I guess, in their original launch, and this one has stayed the course. It is Bay Rum. It is Dr. John's take on Bay Rum. I would not classify this as super traditional Bay Rum because they've added a couple of notes that you're not going to find in a really classic Bay Rum. I think they are marvelous additions to Bay Rum. We'll talk about them when we get to the scent. The label, as you can see, is super colorful, very pretty. Got a pretty lady on it, a uh, reference to the, per the, the, the pirate that the soap was named after, Anne Bonnie, one of the first female pirates in the New World. Um, the back has a nice full back label that comes on all of their soaps. This is the four ounce version. There have been two and four ounce versions, but this is the, the bigger tin. It's a screw on tin, and that is what the soap looks like. It's, it's got a little suds in it because I just lathered it up, but that's what it looks like. It is quite firm. It is, I mean, like I'm not even putting a dent in it and it's still damp, so that's a pretty firm soap. Uh, it loads very easily. I don't have any problems loading it. And uh, I wet my face and we'll get to the shave. I'll talk more about it. Using a badger brush today from Jeff Anderson. Dr. John's Handcrafted Soap Company is based in Delaware. The town of Delaware, not the state of Delaware. It's in Delaware, Ohio. It's made by John and Kim Eplin. They've been around, I'm guessing here, they've been around just a little bit longer than I have. So maybe six years or so. Um, they've been making soap and they added a bunch of products to their lineup along the way, including aftershave splash, um, colognes, solid colognes, EDP colognes, and uh, I think they have bath soaps too. They have a whole bunch of products on their website. And a bunch of them are available at West Coast Shaving. So let's add a little water to it. The base is vegan. All of their products are vegan. It's something that John and Kim are passionate about. This is the version 2 of their soap. They have released a few scents in version 3. And I believe they're going to be launching their core lineup in version 3 any day now. And I have not had a chance to use that, so I can't comment on it, but I have used version 1 and 2 quite a bit. And I can tell you that if you have not tried version 2, it's a, it's a good improvement over version 1. The, uh, the density of the soap is much, much better. You can see this is a nice, uh, I would say, medium to high density soap. It lathers up really easily, as you've seen here. Uh, the slickness is great on it. I think the version 2, the, the post-shave feel is definitely kicked up a notch. I'm, I'm a big fan of the post-shave feel on their soap. I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? I'll give you a little tip real quick. Most of you guys can ignore this because it doesn't apply to you. But if you're like me and you wear glasses, you have to make the decision whether you're going to shave with glasses on or with glasses off. If you're like me, the decision is kind of made for you. I can't see without my glasses on, so shaving would be a mess. So there are a lot of kind of things to deal with when you're shaving with glasses on. I don't have a great tip for how to keep from getting lather on your glasses. It happens to me sometimes. I think I got a little bit. No, I'm pretty clean today. Um, I often get a little bit of lather on the corner of my glasses. It doesn't interfere with my ability to see, so I don't worry about it. But when you're reusing a safety razor like this Merker 34C, you have to be very careful. Don't make the mistake that I made early on, trying to slide the razor into position under my glasses. I got a nice little cut on my cheek right here. So you can do like me and pick up the glasses and then come down with it and avoid that trouble. So let's see that in action right here. Pick up the glasses. I mean, our beards all kind of started slightly different places here, but that, that's my trick. 
for how to shave the glasses on so that it doesn't doesn't cause a problem because it definitely can. All right, back to the soap. Performance overall for me is very good. I'm very pleased by their their upgrades in their version two formula. The version one worked worked good for me, but version two is is definitely a step up and it. You'd love to see an artisan make the improvements that people have asked for, and that's what they did in version 2. Looking forward to find the, trying the version 3 here shortly. The scent. Oh, the scent of Anne Bonny. This is... I know a lot of people have feelings about Bay Rum. This is a clove-free Bay Rum. To me, that's important. I like my Bay Rums clove-free. A lot of your more traditional bay rums might use clove. I prefer those scents that, that exclude it. The, probably the first ingredient that goes into this soap is rum, actual dark rum. Dr. John, John Eplin, likes to use the Kraken. And I've heard that every time he composes the scent, he takes a shot as he's pouring it into the mix. <laughs> I guess that's part of the magic of Anne Bonny. Obviously you need the bay for bay rum, which is pimento racemosa. A lot of people get confused and think it's the bay leaves that we use for cooking, which is bay laurel. It's not. These grow in the Caribbean. and they use the real deal. And I have a very strong preference for bay rums that use genuine pimenta racemosa bay leaves. What else? Those are the very traditional elements that they use in it. So what do they add to that? Well, they add lime. Okay, lime is not a weird ingredient to add to bay rum. Lots of people add, add lime to bay rum. We, if you watch my last shave, I used Captain's Choice Lime, which uses lime and bay. It, it serves to, to brighten it up a little bit, to add a little bit more interest to the bay rum so it's not so dark and moody. So I love lime and bay rum. Like peanut butter and chocolate, it just, it just works great together. What else do they add? Now this is where it gets interesting. They add black tea to the scent. Now black tea is found here and there throughout wet shaving. It's a very dark, smoky, um, very strong scent. It's one of those scents that lasts and lasts and lasts on your skin and throughout the shave. And one of the things I love about the original core scents from Dr. John's is that in most of those soaps, including Anne Bonny, I can pick out every individual note that they put on the label. It's not that they don't blend, because they, they work together beautifully, but it's like a beautiful chord where you can pick out each note, but the harmony is there, right? And that's how the black tea works in this for me. It doesn't stand out. It's not particularly smoky, but it really makes Anne Bonnie stand out from the other bay rums. And I think makes it very, very special. While we're talking about scent and strong scents, this is one of the stronger scents in my den off the tub uh, and when lathered. It is, if you want to do a tin scale, it's probably a seven or eight. It's very strong. It hangs around through the whole shave, which is wonderful. That's exactly what I want out of the soap. For me, 
bay rum is a wintertime scent. It's one of the interesting thing about, things about bay rum. For some people, it's a summertime scent, and for some people, it's a wintertime scent. I live in South Louisiana. Summers are hot and humid. And for me, a lot of bay rums can be a little, little kind of strong or cloying during those months. So when the weather starts to cool down a little bit, which it's it's about to do, it hasn't done it yet here. I get into the bay rums. And I love them. But, you know, as far as when to use this scent or any bay rum, it's kind of something you figure out for yourself. I think there's a lot of guys that use them yet year round, and I know other guys that, that stick to either the summer or the winter with them. You can do it however you want. And if you're one of those people who likes to use shaving as a way to connect to a bygone era, or maybe to a person that you miss in your life, like a grandfather, Bay Rum may be one of those scents that brings you back. There's a lot of, it's been around a long time, it was very common in barber shops. My, my barber has a bottle of Bay Rum sitting on his counter that he uses. And so this may be one of those scents for you that will remind you of someone or take you back. So who do I recommend Dan Bonnie for? If you consider yourself a fan of Bay Rums, do yourself a favor, get some Anne Bonnie. If you've tried something like Pinaud's Virgin Island Bay Rum and you didn't care for it, this might be a nice one to try because it's got enough other things going on to make it different from something like that. If you are a bay rum traditionalist who thinks lime and black tea have no pace in bay rum, I challenge you to try it, Bonnie, because it is so good and so well done that I think it might change your mind. Okay, let me rinse up real quick here. I gotta rinse out my brush. And then we're gonna talk about the aftershave. because this is not a scent I want to leave in the bin and walk away from. And one of the cool things about the addition of the lime and the black tea is that lime is one of those scents that doesn't tend to last all day on, on the skin. It tends to kind of come out at first. Black tea is the opposite. It's one of those scents that tends to linger on the skin and last all day. So in the aftershave, you will find that it lasts and it changes a little bit at a time as the day goes by. So it's a little bit brighter when I put it on right now in the middle of the day. And as the day goes on and the sun sets, it will get a little bit darker which I think is just perfect. The aftershave comes in a glass bottle, round glass, amber bottle uh, with a metal screw top lid, top lid. It does have a restrictor in it, so it's very easy to use. A relatively short ingredient list. It has alcohol, witch hazel, rose water, fragrance, glycerin, aloe, alum, and menthol. Nothing hard to pronounce. <laughs> just a little bit of an extra sting to it 
that you'll find in some bay rums. But then the menthol comes out and cools things down and it's, it's, it's refreshing. Now, if you're like me, and you can't get enough Anne Bonnie, do yourself a favor and get the EDP. <laughs> this comes in a great, uh, once again, dark amber glass bottle to protect the fragrance. It's got a nice top on it and it's got uh, a pump spray. Uh, I say that's how you use it. I'm not going to put it on right now. Usually I like to put the, the fragrance on a little bit later in the day and kind of kind of give it an extra boost uh, as the day wears on. But that's what I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining me for my daily shave. Please, please, if anything in this shave uh, appealed to you, please check out Anne Bonnie. It is sincerely one of my favorite scents in all of wet shaving. Y'all have a great one.